Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here bringing you this video um, on a lovely June morning here in Jerusalem. The big news is that the YouTube channel has passed through the 700 subscriber mark, so I'm super excited about that. I love to see this YouTube channel slowly growing. It's a very, very obscure, small channel in the broader scheme of things, but it's uh, gratifying to me to see each 100 uh, milestone passed. I would say if you want to subscribe to this YouTube channel, subscribe using the regular and not the all feature because I do cover a whole boatload of assorted topics on this YouTube channel. And at least if you go for the subscribe, smart subscribe feature, I don't know if there's a better word for it, YouTube will at least put its algorithm to work to try to get you uh, more relevant recommendations so you won't be bombarded with content that you don't care about. So in just in time for the 700 mark, I wanted to do a video. This is a belief I have or a theory now. Everything, people who don't or just follow me online probably don't really get my personality. My personality is very tongue-in-cheek, sardonic, I think is a word. So I don't actually really want this to be called Roosevelt's theory of content agnosticism. I mean, I would never be so brash as to name a theory after myself like doing that I would let I would at least let other people have the honor um, but uh, this is this is actually something I believe is going to be a long-term trend in content marketing so if you're watching this video uh, yeah it's going to be about content marketing if you don't care about content marketing click away if it is something you're interested in here is a big I would call this a big idea this is kind of a big idea I have about the evolution of content marketing and I tried to explain this before in a long-winded article and I'm gonna do it instead with a long-winded video. So there you go. So here's what I'm talking about. The ultimate direction of content marketing, this is my belief, is to shift towards a, de shift towards a destination in which the format in which content is created is irrelevant. Here's what I mean by that. The way we create content today, and usually content is a word I'm not in love with, but I will uh, reluctantly say that in this context, it kind of makes sense to use the word content. So we have writing, we have podcasting, and then we also have uh, video, okay? And I'm gonna put YouTube in brackets because when it comes to video distribution, ironically, YouTube is actually kind of the only, ironically probably isn't the right word. YouTube is really the only game in town. I'd feel weird criticizing YouTube on YouTube because I actually think YouTube is incredible. Uh, but it definitely does have kind of a monopoly over the, the distribution of video. You know, there are services like Vimeo and anyone can host their own video technically, but video is really big uh, by today's standards of files. And uh, if you compare this with the world, we have a podcasting where there's like a bunch of different podcast hosting platforms out there and writing in which pretty much anyone can set up a blog in their own site. So self-hosting is very feasible or uh, using one of the podcasting services. So it's more limited. Now the way content, now if you think about this kind of shift we have today, right towards writing, okay, I'm gonna put, whoops, I'm gonna put uh, blogs here. It's kind of a natural evolution from the way content was created before people really talked about content. So we has print media, like newspapers, right? And many years ago now people stopped really buying newspapers and it's all about the blogs so cms has came on the market and now we have witnessed a huge democratization of uh writing as a means of communicating with people because everyone pretty much these days can start up a blog ditto for podcasts and videos i think this is a great thing by the way for podcasting its uh predecessor really was radio right so we had radio stations broadcasting stuff and you'd listen to whatever the DJ was playing and that was how people listen to content in inverted commas. And then we had uh, television, right? And these have been succeeded, I would say largely over the years, or they're in the process of succession by these, we're seeing kind of a confluence of, at the moment, I'm gonna draw these guys down a little bit here. And I would regard this as an evolution, okay? because. We're not seeing mainstream media not engaging with these platforms, with YouTube content creation, professional media, and podcasting and writing. We're seeing professional media organizations you distributing their content through the same channels as amateurs, like people like me, who just do it for fun or whatever. 
So I do think we're actually seeing a replacement and this is the shift we're seeing across these three buckets. Now the thing is this, for your average Joe, your content consumer, let's take me for instance, I'm gonna give myself a different shade in this lovely, I, I'm really, a fond, really fond of this diagramming software, draw.io, dot, draw dot content consumer, content consumer um, is me, right? So let's say I care about a pretty niche subject such as backup and by the way this is one of the major effects i think we've seen with the democratization of content We're, we've seen an explosion in content because it's become so much easier to create content right we've seen a democrat democratization of the content creating process and we've seen um an increased long tail of content so rather than having just a few kind of um mainstream providers because the barriers to entry were super high back then we're now seeing pretty much everybody getting involved in some form of content creation or not everyone but a lot of people and that's created a massive long tail of niche content creators so if you have a content consumer like me and i'm interested in a niche fields like let's take something i'm actually interested in backup right so nowadays i kind of have an amazing array of content to care about and it's almost overwhelming i can subscribe to youtube channels where backup is a focus i can talk i can subscribe to podcasts that talk about backup and i can subscribe to bloggers now the problem or what i see the the way that we have this set up at the moment currently is that it's kind of mostly working in silo so traditionally you had print journalists and radio broadcasters and tv hosts and for the most part people didn't straddle across the spheres and it's still kind of like that nowadays it's not that youtubers um, don't have podcasts but typically people will do a podcast or a YouTube channel or they'll be a blogger and um, so this creates for your average content consumer they have to follow their favorite content creators across different channels based on their context and here's this is kind of my big idea so we're what I, the phase we're at today I call context driven content consumption and let me explain what I mean by that what I mean by that is that the um, the way in which your average the way in which your average person consumes content, whether they watch YouTube or podcast or uh, read a blog for that matter, is dictated by the context they find themselves in. So in this sense, it's actually somewhat strangely, I would argue, video and writing are more uh, closely allied than podcasting. When when do you watch YouTube videos? People watch YouTube videos or streaming services when they get back home from work and they're on their couch i'm talking about recreational content consumption for the most part here so that's when people watch youtube podcasting now the the difference between audio and video is that you can consume audio very easily while doing other things and that's been also a big advantage of radio historically so you can be exercising while listening to podcasts you can't really be jogging for the most part if you're jogging outside while holding your tablet in front of you watching a youtube channel you could but it would look ridiculous and it would be hazardous so therefore when it's audio only content people uh, tend to engage with that best when the context they're doing is one in which their vision is required so maybe they're commuting to work uh, and they're maybe they're driving to work so they'd be watching a podcast Maybe they are taking a bus to work, in which case they don't need their visuals to be focused on the road. So in that case, they'd watch a YouTube video. And blogs, some people just prefer reading, I think, more than others. Um, but you do, it's a visual aspect uh, without any audio. So that's the difference between video and writing, and when you think about it, right? Writing video content is moving images, and, um, and audio and writing is just textual. Now, within writing, we have a couple of... Um, things like graphics graphics and infographics that's kind of subsumed within uh, writing so that's where we are today in terms of content consumption and it doesn't really make sense when you think about it because people are not interested in um, people really want to follow interesting content and, and content creators that resonate with them and they'd ideally like to I would this is my theory or my argument they'd want to follow the same, they'd, wa they'd want to go from context-driven content consumption to content-driven content consumption, which I know is a bit of a sort of weird way, consumption, right? So how do we get from one to two? And I would argue that we are getting there 
very quickly naturally. So let me just kind of simplify this graph a little bit. So we're currently at context-driven content consumption and we're moving towards content-driven content consumption where people follow, engage with content, not based upon the context, but based upon the person creating the, con the content. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of these arrows. So what we need to get from A to B is what I call like connections between writing, podcasting, and, and video. I'm gonna use the, uh, this little arrow yoke and uh, put these guys up here because it, there's two, so there's connections between, potential connections between writing and podcasting and audio distribution and connections between video and audio. And there's gonna be finally a uh, connection between video, sorry, between text and video. Okay, this is getting a little bit messy. I'm just gonna put it in at the bottom. So how can we currently, if we're uh, creating written content, how can we create a podcast from that? So the answer is in this direction, we have text to speech technology or speech synthesis technology. And this is already a kind of relatively fertile field, even though it's still fairly early stage. There are technologies, I've used a few of them, that will allow you to feed in text and a synthesized voice engine will make that available as a podcast. So we're gonna see, this is my prediction, and uh, coming up soon, and um, we've already seen, by the way, Medium rolling this out as a feature. By Medium, I'm talking about medium.com, where you can listen to an article instead of reading it. So that's, we're seeing a big move from connecting between this silo and this silo. TTS is gonna get us from writing to podcasting. Podcasting to writing, so that's on this side. And then on the bottom side, we're getting from here through um, auto transcription. So automatic transcription, like let's say Rev, is working on the opposite direction of TTS. Text-to-speech or speech synthesis technology is taking writing and creating uh, artificial audio from it, not generated by a human. And when we are trying to take human originated audio and make it into machine and go to machine derived text that's the job of auto, auto transcription uh, services uh, right and these two uh, fields tts and auto transcription are getting better all the time so it's getting easier now for someone who's a writer to, to automatically have a podcast and this is really what my theory is about i'm saying that for the content creators of today we're currently largely working in silos. The content creators of tomorrow are going to just create content and it's gonna be automatically distributed across every possible format, allowing the content consumer of tomorrow to just plug into creators they're interested in and not, um, you know, not subscribe, to, not, not have their content preferences dictated by context as we, as we kind of have today. So uh, let's just finish this off, getting from audio to video. So if you think about it, that's not really a technology that is really out there at the moment. However, we're seeing getting from writing to video. We're currently about halfway there. So I'm gonna put images here as an intermediate stop. Now we already have an interesting AI that's getting a lot of attention at the moment. and it's called uh, DAL-E2. So we're seeing right now that we're getting halfway with uh, DAL-E2. We can type in something and it'll give us an image and then video is basically images that are moving. That's what differentiates between still images and video content. So we're eventually gonna make the leap from writing to video. So if we start in writing, someone who writes a blog post, we have technology coming available to um, automatically generate a podcast. There's already that technology, it's just kind of rudimentary. And more rudimentary is the technology to say, okay, I'm gonna write something and we're gonna auto-generate an AI-generated video. And what we need for that to happen is basically this DALI 2 
software to go, this suite of software, GAN software, AI generated software to go from generating images to generating videos um, and perhaps sound is going to be somehow integrated to them. Now that's the evolution in this direction from video to, uh, sorry, from writing to video. The evolution in the other direction, video to audio is actually very easy. I'm just going to draw an arrow here. We're using the underside for um, the move this way. Video to audio is actually really easy because video is moving images and audio, right? So if I wanted to make this um, episode of my YouTube channel available as a podcast, I could simply extract the MP3 file and share that over a podcast hosting platform. The problem is that it, traditionally for no good reason, um, streaming platforms have made it difficult to do this. For instance, YouTube doesn't let you play a uh, video in the background unless you're a premium subscriber. So I predict that that's gonna change or con content consumers are going to demand background playing because what we currently have is a lot of ridiculous duplication in which podcasters, for podcasters to get onto video um, currently, this stage of the process, it's kind of a manual process. It doesn't make a lot of sense. What people will do is they'll take their podcast episode, they'll slap on some cover art, and they'll put a video. Now it's different if they're actually recording a video uh, podcast, which is, you know, they actually record the video and then they distribute via podcast and video. So they're doing two things there, but uh, the there's no real automatic way at the moment to flip from podcasting to video, although it's really, really conceivable. There aren't products I'm aware of that'll say, here's your, um, you know, here's your audio file, put in your still image, put out a video and put it up on YouTube, right? but uh, this can be automatic too. So it's currently manual, but really this could be 100% automatic. It's actually the, the video to audio gap is really the easiest one, automatic. But we're, we're, we're losing, if you will, we're um, getting less rich content because we have video and audio here, and now we're stripping out the visual layer to get back to podcasting. How do we get from audio to writing? So that's auto transcription. How do we get from video all the way back to writing directly, uh, auto transcription also because audio, video is audio and moving images. So we just need to um, do, and there was already that by the way, video to blogs, DALI 2. An example of this is YouTube auto caption. So when I record this, when I finish putting this, recording this video, I put it up to YouTube after a period of time YouTube's going to automatically put in uh, captions. That process is getting better over time. And very soon we're gonna be at a point where the technology is there that we just extract. We go YouTube video, click to convert to blog post and AI is going to format it with headings, etc. We're already very close. So this is the way technology is going. And when I plotted it like this, the whole purpose of this video and exercise was to show that we're already pretty much there in terms of the technology needed to make content agnosticism. In reality, we just don't kind of have platforms right now that are doing this all automatically because the technology is still fairly early stage. So if I write a blog uh, to, to put a podcast out from that, it's going to be a manual process, right? I need to sign up for a speech syn synthesis engine, which are usually uh, premium services, and I need to then create my podcast. So I need to do that by myself. If I want to convert my blogs into YouTube videos, that there's not really a tech that does that at the moment, but I predict there will be one very soon. We take our writing, we add speech syn synthesis, and then we use an engine like DALI 2 to pull in stock imagery or AI generated imagery that matches the content. And that's gonna allow us to go from video to YouTube. So your average writer is going to become a videographer and we're gonna see uh, YouTube content being a mixture of human originated video and um, AI originated video. Much as podcasting nowadays, we have mostly human podcasts, but it's po possible that we have AI podcasts that is just, a, it started with a human writing a blog post, but then it's a completely synthetic voice um, in the podcast. So I know that's a totally wacky sort of video here. I feel a little bit like a mad, professor on speed or something, even though it's uh, seven in the morning and I'm recording this and I'm actually a little bit 
a uh, little bit uh, groggy still, but that's the way I see content evolving. And I think it's gonna be a really good thing when, it, when we finally get there. And by getting there, I just mean a point where people don't have to figure out what, I, I call these jumps between the, the various buckets. You're gonna just push a button and convert your blog post into a uh, new audio, new podcast episode, new YouTube video, and your avid YouTuber is gonna push a button and they're gonna spin out a podcast from that video and uh, pull out a pull out a blog and auto post a medium or something like that. And when we get to this point at which the tech is fully mature for jumping between these three different uh, buckets, we're going to reach a new evolution. We have this evolution that we had, you know, 10, 20 years ago from traditional print journalism to radio to television to their modern replacements, but we're still creating content in uh, silos for the most part and we're at a point now of context-driven content consumption and when all these technologies, and basically it's AI that's going to be making this happen, right? We're talking about artificial intelligence, uh, well, TTS isn't AI, but it's uh, humans and technology work in harmony to make all these uh, gaps disappear and then when we finally get to that point, your average content consumer is going to subscribe to a content creator they're going to be available all the time and your uh, your preference of how you consume their content is not going to be dictated by context but rather you're going to be um, subscribing to certain uh, followers uh, based upon uh, how much their content resonates with you and how much you're engaged with it so there you go that's my theory of content agnosticism this is how or uh, maybe a better title for this video i'll go for is how i see content marketing evolving in 10 or 20 years or short term that's not quite as exciting as this little theory um but that's my big prediction for content marketing and how by the way can content creators leverage this so i would encourage my clients and i don't really have clients at the moment i'm really working for one client but at the moment um while we're waiting for this technology to happen people can get ahead of the game by doing this themselves right we have the technology to do a lot of this if you're a writer if you want to get if you want to take your writing and put videos up on youtube with basic stock uh, video basic stock videos and tts there's nothing stopping you from doing that if you're a youtuber and you want to try to widen your audience through blogging there's nothing stopping you from pulling out an auto-generated YouTube transcript. Right now, you're gonna to have to human, as in you, are gonna to have to format, format it a little bit for text because at the moment, we're not quite at this point yet where we have perfect technology to make all these jumps, but I think we will in the near future. But while we're waiting for the technology uh, to mature, uh, people can, I recommend that everyone uses the technology we have to do this process manually. And if you're currently putting out content on YouTube and also, uh, you know, extracting that to a podcast and finally um, uh, extracting that to blogs, that's going to allow you to uh, to maximize your reach in our current context driven content consumption framework that is slowly going to give way to content driven content consumption. Anyway, if no, if there was no other reason for this to make this video, it's that I can post this link in a few years and say, I told you guys, I told you guys. Uh, so that's my theory of content agnosticism. Hope this was interesting. Thank you guys for watching, listening or reading uh, because I'll post a link to this as a podcast and an article. And until the next video, thank you for watching.